Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're gonna to talk about math standards specifically for California here. So this article popped up in my feed uh, a while back here. Uh, July 6th is when the article came out. Uh, the article is the University of California changes math standards. Some faculty aren't happy. I will link it below if you're interested. Um, to read the whole article, you just have to sign up. I signed up because I really wanted to read this article. Um, again, it's free. But the University of California, essentially what happens is they set standards, the universities do for the high school levels, and there's a group that meets with people from different areas, and they try to figure out what are the educational standards, um, again, students should have in high school from California to prepare these you know, high school students in California for universities in California. So kind of a state program looking at uh, their high school education, making sure they can feed students into the university system. And the concern is that under the United States' standard math kind of teaching structure here, um, it goes, essentially you learn arithmetic, uh, then you learn algebra, geometry, algebra two, uh, pre-calculus, trigonometry, and calculus. Um, we learn them in that order. So that's how the US system is kind of set up. This is how California has been doing it. Uh, in California here, from reading the article, it is required that you take through Algebra 2 here. So you don't have to take pre-calculus, trigonometry, uh, or calculus, but you need to be at least taking arithmetic, uh, algebra, geometry, and Algebra 2, which I feel like are the pretty basic fundamentals here that everybody should have. But what ended up happening is California ended up changing the standard and allows students to take data science. So... This is where it rubs me a little bit here. Um, and what's called the BORS here, which is the Board of Administration in Relations with Schools here in California, it seems like it kind of got passed. There were two individuals who got two of these classes passed. And what ended up happening, it seems like the students have been taking these courses and then going into the university system. And then if they want to go down a STEM path, so you know, science, technology, engineering, or mathematics, uh, these students aren't prepared because they didn't really take algebra two, they took data science and they took some other hodgepodge courses and they weren't really prepared to jump into the STEM sort of fields here. So again, Algebra 2 is kind of like one of those basic fundamental courses here. It benefits almost everyone. Uh, so when I first read this article, I was like, you know, I am completely with this. I am against having the data science and statistics. So yes, even statistics here in high school. Um, as a, a kind of check the box mentality of checking off these math prerequisites. You need the foundations. Like, I love statistics, I know. But you still need the basic math foundations to do anything. It's that foundational layer that we build upon. And too often, I think public schools um, in general, maybe even some private schools, are actually skipping a lot of the foundational courses. Uh, I think universities are doing the same thing now. So this is why I'm not a big fan of data science uh, degrees, education, and learning, because often they take this really, really narrow path straight down as fast as they can to the business solution, and they completely ignore all the foundational principles around it, which creates massive havoc when these things blow up, which I see happen constantly because data scientists aren't qualified to build models. Now, when I say this, I'm not saying all data scientists, it's just the field of data science, just like quantitative finance, which is the field I represent, uh, is often taught in that manner. So quant finance is going down that same path where we try to teach like this one really specific advanced topic and we just teach it all the way to the very end and we're not teaching all the foundational principles here. So this creates issues here. Now there are excellent data scientists and there are excellent quant finance people and excellent statisticians all over. Um, but at the end of the day, the way that you do education, especially in mathematics, is you have to build a solid foundation to even build upon. So you could do something like data science, machine learning, uh, quant finance, engineering, something else on top of that, but you need these funda foundational courses to really get going here. And then on top of that, the back of my mind, uh, a past life of mine comes up, which is going to be, do other students so that are not going to be STEM students need these? Should they be required, right? Why should we be requiring students to take, you know, pre-calc and calc? And, you know, I worked in construction for eight years at a startup manufacturing firm uh, doing manual labor. So I didn't need calculus and pre-calc. And then of course I reread the article and it's like, yeah, it's only required through algebra two. And yes, even in construction, I had to use some algebra. Like I know you don't ne technically have to, but in many cases, like, you know, 
I'm missing some sort of quantity and just solving for X or solving for some sort of solution. Um, I did some accounting on the side. I did operations management when I worked in construction as well. So yes, I was doing manual labor. And then I was having to manage people, employees, do time cards and payroll. And uh, there's a lot of planning and orchestration going around this and reading drawings and stuff. You need algebra from time to time. And I think it is a skill, though, that everybody should have, whether you're going into something that is super quantitative and technical, or even if you're going to do something that is a skilled trade, or even if you're going to do just generic things in life. And it just, it blows my mind. Um, and it kind of reminds me of a story my mom was telling me. She was, my mom works at a grocery store. I won't name which one, but she was counting off inventory and, you know, looking at these stacks of items and saying, you know, that's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and there's two more, so that's 32. And the guy next to her was like, wow, you're counting so fast. How are you counting so fast? And my mom's looking at them explaining like, well, we just count in batches, right? So you have, you know, five groups or whatever. So even if you said, you know, five and you said, okay, there's four, one, two, three, four, five times four is 20. So therefore you write down 20 on the order sheet. This individual though, their brain's not working like that. And so even in simple jobs where it doesn't require heavy math and stats and machine learning and, you know, probability theory, um, I think building these sort of foundations, and I think algebra too in this case, it should be a mandatory requirement for all educational systems here. Um, but a lot of university professors were writing from all these California universities. And I think it was from every university. There are even minority groups writing and complaining, saying you are not preparing students for college courses. And since we're taking these students and now they discover in college, they're really interested in a STEM course and they don't have the prerequisites, they're either not going to get accepted into these universities which is unfortunate because tax dollars are putting them through public schools for high school. And then if you're not prepared for the in-state schools, it's going to be more expensive to go out of state or to do a career degree that you might not might not like or might not be prepared for. Um, and so a second article came out July 11th here and the boards here uh, for the University of California uh, actually reversed the decision here. So they are now dropping, uh, I think, the data science courses and the statistics courses because these are not comparable to Algebra 2. And the entire argument for this was that, yes, they had much overlap with Algebra 2, and that was the argument of the two individuals who made these courses. So I'm not going to go into the skepticism on why two professors made courses for high school students and one disclosed, well, they got grants and some other things, and so that really paid for it anyways, I just feel like there's some other incentives on top of this, but academic professors from multiple universities, I think almost all of them in the state of California that are California universities that are public, uh, as well as all these different departments ranging from a wide range, I think like stats and math and engineering and other, you know, schools in the STEM fields were all saying students were coming in not prepared. So education as a whole is kind of a interesting topic. I like to think about it and look at it a lot because I know many of you are in the educational process as well. And math is one of those key fundamental things where you can't just dive in in the middle. You have to kind of build layer on layer here. So if you're interested in this article, I'll link both the articles below. Um, anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you think students should have a mandatory list of math classes? Uh, here in the state of Texas and many spots of Dallas, uh, they offer all kinds of extra classes like statistics and uh, physics and all these things. I think it's a waste of time because I don't think students are actually getting the full foundational courses that you actually need. I also think there's too much of a rush uh, to teach all kinds of cool, fun, exciting, hands-on things, and yet students aren't going to have the fundamentals to kind of grasp real-world problems here. So what do you guys think in the comments below? Do you think we should offer more variety in courses? Because as some of these articles pointed out, maybe it's more inclusive. Um, uh, again, I, I don't know how that's going to help you, though, because for a lot of these careers to do them quite well, you need a good foundation in basic mathematics. So anyways, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And as always, until next time.